If you're not using Cricut's print and cut feature, guess what? You're leaving so much money on the table when it comes to your Cricut machine. In today's video, I'm gonna teach you all of the Cricut money saving hacks I have for print and cut. These are gonna save you time and time again to get the most out of your material, the most out of your machine, and of course, the printer. I cannot wait to share with you these hacks. So if you are brand new here, hit subscribe. We upload new Cricut videos almost every single day. And be sure to leave me a comment letting me know your favorite hack down below. The first hack I wanna share with you guys is actually before you even get to the process of printing and cutting. And that goes back to setting it up properly to fill an entire sheet. And I wanna share with you exactly how I do this to help you really understand the process because you only have one sheet at a time. So if you're printing one sticker at a time, you'll find that you're wasting a lot more material. So you'll always wanna make sure that you try and fill an entire sheet. And from a lot of you that write in to the channel, you say, Tanner, how exactly do you fill an entire sheet? So let me share with you that right now. You're gonna see right here, we have quite a few stickers on the Cricut canvas. Now, one thing that we teach here at Makers Gonna Learn is that when you are putting your images onto the canvas, guess what? They do not show up the same way that you would when you are um, going to the Make It section. So I have two different tips that I'm going to share with you that will help you in this process. Number one, the first thing you can do is just set up your stickers like I have right here and just kind of guess. So I have these stickers right here and then I can press the make it button and then look right here. It's go automatically populate in the make it section. And what you're gonna see here is that, first of all, it thinks we're using a large mat. We are not. We're gonna go back to the letter size, so eight and a half by 11 uh, for our material. And then we're going to let it auto formulate over here. Now, as you can see, when it automatically populates, for the most part, we have some really, you know, it did really well. But what I want you to see here is that there's room for us to kind of manually move some of these around and we could actually make this fit a lot more than we think. And the way that you can manually do this is I just zoom in, I click on an image of my choice, and I just move it around. Like it's literally this easy to create space for us to set up our sheet. Like look at this, super easy, right? Well, guess what? Now we see that there's something on mat two. So what we can do is we can click on mat two, we can select mat two's image and it'll automatically select it. We'll click the three buttons in the top right hand corner. And now we're going to select move object. When you select move object, it's gonna allow you to move that object from its own mat to mat one. So just click on mat one and press confirm. Now you can see it is right back here. And look, now we're able to squeeze it in here. Now here is why I don't love this feature and I have another hack for you that I'm gonna share with you next. Let's say that we, you know, have already went through all of this work of setting up these images, making space, and we have a significant amount of space. Here's the thing. What happens when we are like, okay, I have more space, I'm going to add some more stickers. When I leave this make it area, guess what? Everything's gonna revert back and I'm gonna have to start over. So to save us from having to do multiple steps and continually be moving things around, I wanna share with you the easiest hack, which is something you can do on your canvas. So let me share with you that right now. All we're going to do is press cancel and go back to the canvas and let me share with you this hack. All right, so once you're back to your canvas, what I want you to do is I want you to add a brand new shape. Go over, select add shape. You can select this to be like a light gray color. That's what I prefer. You can do white, whatever you want. 
and now you're going to create this size of rectangle or square. You're going to take a rectangle or square and size it to this size, 7.44 by 9.94. All right, now that we have that inside of our canvas, we are now going to fill this shape up so that we do not waste any material from a regular sheet of sticker paper. Now, this is to be really specific for anyone that's working with just a regular eight and a half by 11 sheet of sticker paper. So you can do larger print than cuts, but in today's training, we're focusing on the eight and a half by 11 sticker paper and hacks around that. So once you've done this, you can see, we can start adding in our stickers and I'm going to move my uh, gray rectangle to the back. And now I can just start feeling my stickers in right here. And I'll be able to like make some smaller ones. I'll be able to like fill things in better. And you're going to see how this is going to save us a lot of time by setting it up here before even making it to the make it section. So look at this. What I love is once you add in the stickers that you are considering doing, here's what I love. You can go through and size some up. You can size them down. You can just try to fill the entire sheet, which I really, really appreciate. So then you can say, okay, which sticker would I want more of? Because it's really important that we don't waste the space we have right here, right? So you have a few options. You can duplicate from your existing stickers or you could go to makersgonnalearn.com where we have thousands of print and cuts. You can pick a new one and add it onto the same sheet. So what I can do here is go to my uploads area. And what I love about Makers Gonna Learn is that once you have made um, an image and you've uploaded it to your Cricut Design Space, guess what? You don't have to go back to makersgonnalearn.com and re-download it the next time you want it you will already have it linked to your Cricut account. So when you scroll through your uploaded images, you can just scroll through, scroll through. You can see we're working on a lot of Christmas. I can search sticker and I can be like, oh my gosh, like, of course I wanna do coffee as my craft fuel. So I'm going to add that to Canvas. I'm going to add another sticker to Canvas. And all of these are found uh, at makersgonnalearn.com. So I've added these two stickers and you can see this one imported really large. I'm just going to scale it down to four inches. Now that we're scaling these down, you can just kind of take them and place them where you would like it on the canvas. So do you see that I can just turn this like vertical scale it down a little bit more, turn it vertical. I'm gonna rotate this 90 degrees and there you have it. So we've been able to fill in our entire sheet and now we have a full sheet of stickers. The last step before we move forward is you want to first make sure all of your stickers are set to print then cut. You can do that in your layers panel. So you just make sure it all says print then cut and now you'll go down to your square or rectangle. You're going to delete the rectangle because you're not actually printing and cutting it. So we're going to delete that out. And the last but not least step is it's very, very important for us to select all of these stickers and do what action? Attach. We must, must, must attach right here on the canvas before we move to the make it section. It's very important that when you have something set up in Cricut Design Space on the canvas to actually have it move forward with you to the mat area and the make it area, you must first attach. All right, so let's go ahead, select all of these here, and all we're going to do is click attach. Now that this is attached right here, what we can do is press make it 
So now that you're at the Make It area, you can see how well this went ahead and automatically set it up. If for some reason your sizing is a little bit off, what I love is that you can go back to the canvas, scale it down just a little bit, and then when you go to make it, under material setting, you will be able to make sure you select the letter size. And you can see on ours right here, letter size is selected. Now you'll be able to cut that out really easily. Now that you know the best way to set up your images, let me tell you my best kept secret for making sure I save the most money when I'm stocking up on my printable material. First of all, I absolutely love this brand right here. It is Zakoto, and we picked this up on Amazon. There's so many different finishes between matte to glossy. We absolutely love the feel of these stickers. They literally feel like you purchased them from a professional print shop, but really you did it at home, which I love having that feel with all my stickers. But my number one secret is actually going to be a little surprising. There's a few materials that I say just buy as needed, but for this right here, I really want to encourage you to stock up on this when you're when they're on sale. So you can see like I have multiple packs right here because what I did was during the uh, you know, deal days at Amazon uh, during Amazon prom week in July, I stocked up on this material because it was on such a good discount. Anything over 20 to 30%, that is a really good deal for you to stock up on material. So as we get ready for the holiday season, what is that next big deal going to be? That was probably go take place in November. So if you are just getting started with Cricut, I wanna encourage you to stock up on some of your favorite printable material so that you have a whole stash. This will probably last me a, a year or so, which will be super, super fun to have it on hand for no matter how many stickers you need, you're paying the best price possible and you're not having to wait around because you've stocked up when it's on sale. Now, we've kind of touched on this already, but what I want to encourage you is to start getting into a habit of not just printing one sticker at a time. If you're running a business with your Cricut, that is not going to be profitable for you to waste an entire sheet of sticker paper, number one, or even personally, it's not a good way to steward your material if you're only going to print one sticker at a time. So here's what I do instead. What I would do is I would start setting up my stickers on a Cricut project like I already shared with you and either fill it in with stickers I know I'm going to use in the future or just keep it open and as you remember stickers you want, start adding it to that project and all you'll do is save it for when you're ready. And once you have a full sheet ready to go and filled, then you'll go through that print then cut process. But let's say you need a sticker today and you don't know what stickers you need in the future. You can reuse sticker paper and we have a whole video for you teaching you exactly how to do that. I'll link it down below because it is really, really handy to know how to reuse uh, scrap sheets of sticker paper. If you wanna save the most money when you're using Cricut Print Then Cut, guess what? You need to make a solid investment into a printer that is going to support your Print Then Cut habits. And let me tell you, the more that you print and cut, the more you're gonna to want to use it. It is very addictive and I love it because it simplifies so many of my projects. This right here is the Canon TS9521C. We absolutely love this printer. You could do large print and cuts, you can do 12 by 12, you can do regular letter size, and so much more. If you're looking at other printers, I always wanna encourage you to buy a printer with this rear tray. When you're doing Cricut Print and Cut, you're going to use thicker material. If you're going to use magnet sheet, like printable magnet sheet, we love that. You need this rear tray so it can seamlessly glide through the printer and it's not going to, you know, get stuck in there. It's not having to, you know, do anything that is not just straight through the printer. I've tried to use the rear tray before and it does work, but every three to five tries, it gets stuck in there and you don't want to have to deal with that. 
So go ahead and avoid that by making sure you have a printer with a rear tray. I've had this printer for, I think, over five years, and it is still working so well for me. So that is proof that if you invest in a printer that is, you know, quality, it's going to last you a very, very long time in your Cricut journey. Our last hack is to make sure you're printing on the best quality possible. If you are not customizing your print quality outside of Cricut Design Space, I'm gonna put you onto something that is going to change the way that you use Cricut Print and Then Cut. If you are not using this feature, chances are you're not getting good prints, you're getting lines on your images, and so much more. Here's what happens. If you're not telling your computer to put out more ink, then what's gonna happen is you're gonna start getting those lines in images, especially images that are very dense in color, very uh, colorful and things like that. You are going to run into that issue. The way to prevent it is to tell your computer, to tell the printer, hey, this needs to look the best it can be, so give it more ink so that it can look the best, right? Let me share with you how to do that. So over here, when you're sending to the printer, you're not going to select the printer you have. You're just going to turn on Use System Dialog and press Print. When it, you click Use System Dialog, it's actually going to pop up in the back right here for you. You get to decide all of the settings right here. So I would go through, select the Canon. But what I want to show you is when we talk about media and quality, we are not going to use the auto quality, we are the normal. We're gonna simply move this to best quality, and then we're going to make sure all our other settings are right, and then we can print it. That right there, my friends, are going to save you so much time, so much money with your Cricut and your printer and your material. We absolutely love Cricut Print and Cut. I want to know what is your favorite hack down below that's gonna help you save money and time using Cricut Print Then Cut. Let me know what other Cricut Print Then Cut trainings you would like in the comments down below. Subscribe to Makers Gonna Learn to learn all about Cricut and how to best use Cricut Print Then Cut. And here's the deal. For staying to the end of this video, I wanna offer you a dollar trial to Makers Gonna Learn. With that dollar trial, you can download 20 images which equates to five cents per download for a seven day trial. You get seven days and 20 download credits for only a dollar. Click the first link down below, claim that dollar deal here at Makers Gonna Learn and try out our membership so that you can make amazing stickers with your Makers Gonna Learn family. Check out our training, our Facebook group, and so much more. I cannot wait to see you in the next Cricut video. So be sure to check out this one right here. See you in the next video. Bye guys.